Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In today's video, I'm actually going to take you through a full body workout that's a golf specific style workout that I'm actually just going to do on a Sunday morning here at, in my gym. So I decided today's workout is going to be a little bit different or this video is going to be a little bit different and I'm just going to really work out and kind of create a, a follow along style of video that you can either take chunks out of and use in your own workout or literally just press play and follow me and you'll get a good full body workout that's really specific to golfers. So I'll come over here a lot and just kind of check my notes. I have my computer here, but other than that, I'm going to basically just work out. So use the, the equipment that I have and follow along in, and let's get a good workout in. So before we start, there's some things to prepare. So I got some water. I'm going to have a timer, so you can actually just co off my timer or you can set your phone down or, or something else and have your own timer if that's better for you. The equipment that I'm going to actually use, I'm only going to use kettlebells, um, a foam roller, a band, and a mat to kind of help me when I'm on the ground. Now, if you don't have all these things, let's say you don't have a box, all right, or you don't have kettlebells, you could use dumbbells, right? We're going to actually, you could use stairs for the box. Um, if you don't have the foam roller part, then just skip the foam roller part and start in the actual warm-up. So <clears throat> literally, I'm going to take you through foam rolling to a warm-up to activation to the actual workout. Um, and this is a workout that I've used with golfers, but I'm just going to do the workout on a Sunday morning trying to get fit myself, okay? Um, so before we get started, this is really what we need to understand. We need to understand how to prepare, so we have all of our equipment to prepare. Um, I need my timer, so I have my timer ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I am going to basically just start working out. So make sure you have all your stuff. Press pause and then come back and then let's get going. So the first part of the workout today, I'm going to turn my watch on. I'm curious as how many kind of calories I burned today, how the workout goes, and I'll share all this with you at the end. Um, I'm going to make this a functional training strength workout if you're selecting on your, on your device. For foam rolling, we wanna, we're going to pick three areas to start with today. I have a timer up here. Um, we're just going to go two sides of our feet. So I want you to split your foot in half basically. So we're going to go on the outside of our foot and I want to do 10 passes. So pushing down here right on top of my knee. So one. Two, and with foam rolling, you're only going to do it once. You're not going to do four or five rounds or anything like that. We're just doing one round. Six, seven, and what I'm really trying to do here is I'm really trying to break up fascia. I'm really trying to um, send blood and, and, and get really loose under my foot. This is a great preventative thing. So now I'm going to go to the inside. So watch, I drive my knee in a bit and again, put some force there and roll in and out. It's really a good preventative thing for plantar fasciitis. Think about how much you walk on a golf course. Think about how much you're on your feet playing golf. Your feet are really what grounds you. So it's so important to take care of your feet and be preventative with your feet. You notice I'm not wearing shoes yet. Okay, so now I've done my passes on the inside and outside. I want you to kind of just feel if there's any sticking points and if there is, Find it and then corkscrew on top of it. If there wasn't really a sticking point, come kind of in the center and just corkscrew a bit. And you'll see this kind of breaks up knots or it helps to kind of release any tension under there. So we did our one foot, let's do the other. So again, we start on the outside. And I could just be here. This might be enough for some people. Some people need that extra push and force down to really feel it. I have a trigger point grid here. I did make a video previously about how to use a foam roller. Um, any foam roller would be fine. This is just the brand I have. So eight, nine, ten. So now again, we go to the inside of our foot. So I just drive my knee in a bit. And again, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on as I'm driving my foot back and forth. And 10. Okay, so now again, I'm going to corkscrew. So I'm going to find kind of the area that is a little sticky. For me, it's kind of right there. 
And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. So as we go through this, I want to try to tell you why we're doing some of these things or what's the importance of doing some of these things. So like I just said, plantar fasciitis, we want to prevent that. We also want our feet to feel good so we can feel more grounded on the course. The second one we're going to do is we're going to go right into uh, our calves. So think about how much walking we do. So for our calves, I want to split it into two groups. So I want to do the bottom half of the leg and then the top half of the leg. You can lift yourself up and just go to the meaty part and then back. So let's go 10 reps. So two, three. To make it a bit harder, you can bring one foot over top of the other one. Five, six. You want to breathe throughout. It's so easy to be like rigid. Even in your foot, you want to relax your foot. Eight, nine, and 10. So once we do our 10, See, I drop my bum back down and I want to slide side to side with um, my ankle. And you'll feel this a lot, especially if you have tight calves, which most people do. I mean, we walk constantly. One of the biggest things that your calves can do for your golf swing, if they're very tight, is you can early extend. So all my golfers out there that come over the top or they early extend or they slice the ball a lot, a lot of um, calf work could probably help influence that in a positive way. You're going to actually... Um, limit that as much because if you're very tight in your calves it's pulling you as you rotate so remember we're doing 10 more here on this top one so that's 7 8 9 and 10 so I'm going to go side to side just breathing rhythmically I'm just trying to feel if there's any tightness and trying to just loosen it up and you're going to feel great here in your lower leg after we're done this. So we did the first side. So now we're going to go to the other side. So remember, start at the bottom and come right up to the meaty part. Ten reps. So in, two, three. And I like to do this before I golf too. I also do this before I work out on other days. Um, foam rolling or body manipulation or tissue work does have a big impact. If you look at these guys on tour or these girls on tour, they're getting um, massages weekly, if not daily. They're having people do um, like ART, ART, like active release therapy, or a lot of types of like PMF stretching with them all the time. So we can use tools like this to get that same advantage at obviously a lot cheaper rate. So it's very important that you do still work on your body. You don't just work on the muscles. You work on the soft tissue stuff outside. Like, that's what the rolling will really be beneficial for. So we're in the second top part of the leg now. So I'm five, six, seven, eight, nine, one more, and ten. Okay, so we still got to go side to side. So I find this a lot more in the top than I do in the bottom, that it really like, it loosens it up, let's say. That's the right feeling of it. Um, and you'll feel almost lighter on your feet and on your legs after you do this. So again, I'm just kind of bringing my ankle in and then rotating it back. And it's really just kind of releasing all that tension. Back and forth, back and forth. Good. Okay, so the third area. So remember we did our feet. We want to make sure that we have healthy feet for walking, grounding on the course. We did our calves. We want to make sure that when we swing, we're not early extending. A lot of the times our calves will bring that into play. And then third one we're going to do is we're going to do our T-spine. Let's talk about rotation. So for our T-spine, we want to start this right at our lower back. I'm going to roll up to kind of just under my shoulder blades. So I'm going to come here, right to kind of my the top of my lower back, back into my shoulder blades. So this is kind of the bottom area that I want to focus on. So again, let's do 10 reps. So three. Make sure you breathe. This one's easy to hold your breath because you're kind of pushing into your diaphragm a little bit at the bottom. The current volume is 100%. Eight. Nine. That was Siri on my computer. 10. And then you just rotate back and forth. So nice and tall, hands on your side, and you're just going from side the side and you'll really feel this depending on where you're tight is. so maybe you can roll up a little bit more and then go side to side again play with kind of the area that you're the tightness in your back but so we go 10 up and down and then side to side about five reps per direction 
and then we're going to do the top half. So then we're going to go basically from the bottom of my shoulder blades just into the bottom of my neck. So from here, back up. Try to relax. Another thing people like to do here is kind of just open up a little bit and you might feel a little more. But really try to relax. Really try to feel like you're melting into this roller. Going up and back. And then once you get to the kind of your 10 reps, that's seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so now you kind of find that spot again. And then five reps per side. Two, three, three, four, four, five, and five. And just kind of relax a little bit. And those are the rear areas that we're going to foam roll. So that's only step one of the warm up. There's three parts to this warm up. So step one, we wanted to do some soft tissue work and roll out our body. Step two is we're going to do a dynamic warm up. So with a dynamic warm up, we're going to try to move in multiple directions. We're going to try to get our heart rate up a little bit. Um, and we're going to really try to loosen up our body and activate our body. So I'm going to use kind of the area right here. I have about 15 feet. Again, if you're at your gym, if you're in your house, wherever you are, you can just kind of pick a small kind of area that you have and move like I'm gonna move here. You don't need a ton of area. Like there's not a, um, uh, it has to be 40 feet or it has to be 60 feet. We can go back and forth lots of times. Okay, so four. The everyday warm up. Um, here it is. So we're going to start. I'm going to go there and back three times for everything. Okay, so first one is just a light jog to get our heart rate up. So nice and slow. So you see, if I had a little more room, I wouldn't have to go back and forth so much. But again, I'm just trying to loosen up. I'm just trying to turn the body on a little bit. So that's three. Now I'm gonna shuffle. So again, now I'm working a different direction. Once I get here, rotate. Shuffle, shuffle, rotate. Shuffle, shuffle, rotate. Three, three. Okay, next one, karaoke. So round. So good, tall posture, really moving those hips. That's one. You hear me breathing, trying to breathe throughout. Good, tall posture, just moving. Last one. Okay, three. Next we have uh, skips. So I'm going to skip forward there and skip backwards back. So I'm. Popping up, pop up, pop up, pop up. Pop back, pop back, pop back. That's one. Good, pop back. Nice and tall, nice and tall. That's two. Good back. Good, that's three. Okay. Moving along nice here. The next one we're gonna do some, so we've got our body kind of moving. My heart rate's at 140, so I'm up and breathing. Um, and my respiratory rate, sorry. Next thing we're gonna do, let's do some kind of active stretching. So the first one, hands out. One, one, two, two, three. Feel this in your glutes. Feel this in your lower back maybe. Feel this in your upper back. Feel this in your chest when you open. Five, five. Same idea, but now we pull our lower leg. So, one, one, two, two, three. Just breathe and move. Three, four, four, five, and five. Okay, next we got um, lunge and rotation. So, Forward lunge, so 
Hands up here. Lunge back, five reps. You see with everything I'm doing here, it's short little bursts. I don't want to fatigue myself in this dynamic warm-up. I just want to get everything active and feel good for when I start loading these patterns. I think a lot of people sometimes do too much in the warm-up, and then they tire themselves out too much so that when they get to the workout, they can't even complete it. So gauge this based on you. If this is too much, bring it back a little bit. Maybe do two reps instead of five. Three. If it's not enough, maybe you gotta go a little bit more. Maybe we do 10. Four. Try the workout a few times and see kind of how it affects you. Okay, so the next one we're gonna go side lunges. We got three more for this dynamic warm up. So side lunge and then back up, hold my knees. So now a little bit of balance. Notice both feet stay forward the whole time. Two, three, four. Good posture as you come down, flex. And five. Okay, so now we'll go the other way. Inhale. Exhale. If arms is too much, this is just contralateral arms. I'm going to try to show you a lot of different um, examples and regressions and progressions throughout this whole workout. Okay, so next one, side bear crawls. So a lot of stuff we've done has been really driven through the lower body, so this is an upper body drill. So I get down, um, it's like how do I want to show you, but you're, you're on all fours, so you're basically here, and all you want to do is lift your knees up, so I have a flat back, so I'm going to go there and back, so here, so opposite arm, opposite leg, stay nice and slow and low, and this isn't a rush, what people start to do when they get tired is lift their hips up, so stay low, opposite arm, opposite leg, all the way to the end, and that's good. Okay, last but not least is skaters. So we'll do five skaters per side. And we'll start on one leg, and you're driving across the other side. Five. Okay, well. I'm warmed up, I hope you are too. Um, that's why the other thing I wanted you to prepare with is water. We're gonna get hot today, we're gonna work out, we're gonna do a, a, a lot of stuff. It's important to drink a lot of water. So we have got through um, our prep, our dynamic warm up, and now we're gonna go into our activation exercises. So. I haven't even started the workout yet. This has all been preparatory stuff. So for the activation stuff, we're gonna be on the ground. So I'm only gonna do um, one set of every one of these. So if you notice, even the foam rolling, one set. Dynamic warm up, one set. So we're just really trying to go through a bunch of things to get our body firing appropriately before we'll do multiple sets in the actual workout. But I love both these drills. So the first one is called adductor rockbacks. So we're on one knee under our hip. Your other leg is way up. Your hands are on the ground and I'm gonna sit back into my leg and then come forward. So that's one, so eight reps. Sit back. Three, two. Three. Four. Nice and rhythmically. This isn't. This stuff's not meant to be done, be done fast. We're gonna do the fast stuff soon. Five, six. Nice and good, tall spine. Even though I'm bent here, I have good posture. Seven and eight. Good. Okay. So now we just literally switch legs. So bring this here. The big thing you want to think about with this leg under the or on the mat is you got to have it underneath your hip. This leg stays out, and I'm just back and forth. So, one, two, I'm already starting to sweat quite a bit. I hope you guys are too. Three, wherever you are in the world, it might be hotter than it is here. I'm in Canada. It's actually not that warm this morning compared to what it usually is. I think we're only at around 20 degrees right now Celsius. Six, 
See, I'm just breathing. I'm, I'm moving at a good rate and I'm breathing. I'm not forcing anything. If you only can get to here, only get to here. Don't try to really push back if you don't have that range of motion. But so that's eight. So that's perfect. So that was our one set of adductor rock backs. Now we're going to do another drill that really opens up our chest. So that really was our hips. So now let's go our upper body. So we're going to be on one leg. I have my band. You can use any band you want. You want it to be light though. If it's too heavy, it might be too hard. So I'm going to be here. I have this band in my hand and I'm just opening right up. So one, back down. Two, back down. Three, this is working on disassociation, separation. It's working on stabilization in my hip while rotating through my upper body. I think we do that in golf a bit sometimes. Four, five, six. And by now, you should be fired up a little bit more. You should be feeling your legs. You should be feeling your upper body. You should be sweating. Your heart rate should be up a little bit. So that was eight, so we'll go to the other side. You should be feeling ready to play, ready to move, ready to work out. Everything we just did, you could do before you play golf too. It would have a huge impact to be this warmed up and this ready to go. I'm sure there's a lot of golfers out there that don't warm up, that by the third hole they're like, oh, I wish I would have warmed up a little bit because now I'm feeling good. It's because it took you three holes to do it. Um, okay, keep moving. So one, two, Three, good tall posture. Four, five, six, seven, one more, and eight, good. Okay, so we're done the warm up stuff. So if you think about it, let's go back. Like I said, I wanna tell you why I do all this stuff and I'm gonna keep talking to you like this the whole time. Full rolling was to get kind of the soft tissue work our feet, our calves, our back. Now we went in, then we went into a dynamic warm up. Circulate the blood, get our heart rate going, feel warm. Okay, very, very important. Then activation of the areas that we're gonna use today. So we're gonna use a lot of hips, we're gonna use a lot of back. So I wanted to make sure that I activated those areas that were firing properly. The next part of this workout is the power part. So you wanna, um, turn on your muscles or you want to activate your muscles a lot uh, before we start to lift. So we're going to do three drills here. We're going to do them three times each and they're only going to be for five reps each. Okay? So for the first time through, I'm going to do it a certain way. The second time through, I'm going to do it a certain way. And the third time through, I'm going to do it a different way. You select the way that's the most appropriate for you. I just want to provide as many examples and different thoughts and ideas that you can implement in your workout today. So, first round, we're gonna do squat jumps, we're gonna do power push-ups, and rotational jumps. For all of these, I want them to be five reps, so we're five reps per side. So squat jumps are first. So, good tall posture. One, two, three. Maybe this is all your squat jump is, and that's fine. Four, five doesn't have to be to the roof. Know your abilities. So that's the first five. Now we're going to go to power push-ups. So for these, I can use a stair, maybe your couch, if you don't have a box like this. So I'm elevated. I'm just driving down. Pop up. One, two, three, four, and five. So power through my legs power through my upper body. The third one is the same idea, but with rotation, power. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna jump, 45 degrees backwards, back to the start, switch feet. Jump. So step, step, jump. Step, step, jump. Step, step, jump. One more, each. step, step, Jump, jump, good. So that's got my heart rate up. I'm breathing more, I'm sweating more. We're getting our system fired for the strength stuff that we're gonna do next, the stability stuff we're gonna do next. So get a drink.
And this time I'm going to actually um, do a squat jump or a box jump up to the, the box. So, instead of squat jumps, if you have a box, if you have stairs, you can jump up to the second or third stair. Jump up onto a box, okay? So let's go, round two, we're doing three rounds of this. So, either do your squat jumps or try one of these. So again, load, up, step down. Step down. I never jump down. Always step down. Up. Step down. My knees stay in line the whole time. Step down. One more. Step down. So there's my five reps. Now I'm going to go back to the power push up. This time, instead of just pushing up, I'm going to snap my wrist to make it a bit harder. So. Still controlling my body every time I lower, just snapping my wrist. Five. For this other one, I'm going to make it a bit easier this time. So instead of jumping, just step. So if that jump was too hard, just step. So I'm. So it's still hard on kind of your coordination and figuring out how to move, but it's just is not as much of an explosive movement. So if, those, if that first one was too hard for you, try this one. I still love this drill. I don't feel like it's really taken too much away from that first one. It's just not as explosive with the bounding. Okay, so that's two rounds. So by now, you should be feeling pretty good. By now, you should be, whew, I'm feeling good. My heart rate's up. I feel like I'm working. Like, my heart rate's at 144 right now, so that's not a low heart rate. That's, we're, we're feeling this exercise. Okay, so we're back to round three. Take longer breaks if you need it. Um, if you feel like continuing and going on with me, then just keep up. If you need more breaks, just pause the video. So, instead of doing the jump up and down, rotational. So if you don't have a box, maybe that looks like this. And up. If you do have a box, maybe that looks like this. And up. So instead of doing five, let's do three per side this time. So I'm here. One more. And then back down. So I'll show the other way. You can see how I load my hips and then drive up. One. One more. And three. So I give you three options with that one. Squat jump, the box jump, or the rotational jump. For the push-up, I only really like those first two. So let's go. I'll go back to the first one for this. So lower down. Right up, right up. So five. That was good. And then our last drill for power, or for this power kind of set, is our rotational jumps. So again, you can select from the first two. If the jumping was too hard, do the step. If the step was too easy, try the jumping. But I'm starting an athletic position. Bound, step, step, bound, step, step, bound. So let's recap. I'm always going to try to recap. So we warmed up, we got activated, we rolled out. Now we've done power, we've ignited our muscles, and we're firing. Now let's do some strength stuff. So we're done with this for now at least. Put it over here. For the strength stuff, I have a bunch of different rounds or a bunch of different supersets that we're going to complete. So the first one, it looks like we got 
a resistance band and a lunge pattern, and then a resistance band and a row pattern. So, I use this resistance band for the first one. I'm probably going to use this one for the second one. I could have used this one for every one. I have multiple resistance bands. If you don't have multiple resistance bands, then use the same resistance band for every one. If you're at a gym, this also could be a cable system. This doesn't also have to be a resistance band. Depends where you are. Remember, this can be done at home. This can be done at the gym. You could go do a lot of this stuff at the park if you had a resistance band and a couple kettlebells. So it really, um, it really depends on your situation, what you have access to. But to get started, we need a resistance band and I want it to be out, um, out approximately at like hip length, okay? So the first row we're gonna do, this is gonna actually, I don't like that. I'm gonna do it with a different resistance band. Just, for, it's not because I want, I don't like the band. I wanna make sure that you can see me and I don't think you'll see me uh, appropriately like that. So, if this resistance band is at our side, I'm just gonna take, I don't like that one either. We're going back here. So with this resistance band on our side, I'm gonna do reverse lunges. So it's easier if it's here, it's harder if it's here, okay? So keeping the band where it's appropriate for you, we're gonna do eight lunges with the inside leg. So I'm here, so. So this is anti-rotation. This wants you to rotate, and also a lot of uh, leg strength doing these lunges. So five. If this band is hard, or if this band is easy, it's a whole other world. Eight, and then I switch to the other side. So you can see here, I have it out. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good, so that's the first one. So you lower body strength, um, core stability, upper body stability. Next row, I have a rowing pattern. So again, I want this band kind of out. I want to sit a bit. So when I pull, I want to reach. So, eight. So every time I pull in, I reach the other way. So I have rotation here. Think about kind of what just happened here. Do I want to change anything? Maybe I want to change my band. Maybe I didn't like how the tension was. Maybe I want to go farther out. And then I'm right back in for round two. So we're going to do three rounds of this. So, I liked how the band was. I know I didn't like it at first, but I liked it after I started moving. So I'm going to stay here again. So this time, remember I said I'm going to try to show you some variations. I'm going to make it a little harder. So I'm through and I drive up. Three, four, just by adding that knee drive, there's a lot more balance involved. There's a lot more activation of different muscles. And eight, it's a lot harder, obviously. Um, so again here, play with what you can do. Maybe you have to be here to come up at first and gradually try to be out as we get better. But you're trying to stay basically in your center line as you're moving. So down, back up, seven, and eight. Good. Back to the row. So when we row and reach, this one I would just to do a little bit harder with speed. So as I'm here, drive up and pull instead of just reach. So. on the other side as well. 
still rotating, just driving my hips a lot more, making it more whole body. Eight, eight reps. Okay, so that's two rounds. Again, catch your bearings, come back, get a drink, take a second. You should be feeling pretty good right now. We're about half an hour into this. So this is our last set of our strength one. So let's do it. You decide which one you like better, the knee up or the one where we just bring our, our back to our neutral stance. I'll go knee up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good job, let's keep moving, keep moving. Remember, play with how this band is, what's best for you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, back to the row. Remember, know what you can do. I'll stick with the first one. Four, five, really stay solid to your lower body and just rotate. Seven, Eight, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, we did it. Strength set done. Okay, for the next one, we have three drills. Again, know yourself. If you need to pause the video, go get a drink. Take a second, go to the washroom, do it. That's the best part about YouTube. You're in control. Um, I'm gonna, again, like I said, try to keep rolling through it just for the video, but uh, take as much rest as you need. Don't be a hero with this stuff. If you need rest, take the rest. Um, the next round, we have three drills, like I said. So we're gonna do an offset squat. So we're actually gonna lift some weight now. We haven't lifted the weight yet that much. We're still gonna use the band for a drill. Uh, and then one of the drills is body weight. So we got three drills here. So I'm gonna just use the 20 pound kettlebell. I mean, I could do this with a little bit heavier, but again, you don't need to lift all the weight in the weight room to be good at golf. Remember that. A lot of people kind of push it a little too far, I think, sometimes. A lot of people don't push it enough, obviously, too. But know kind of your limit. So we're gonna do six squats per side. This is called an offset squat. So I have to react to this. So I'm gonna have one arm out, and this arm isn't just sitting here kind of having tea. I'm active in this arm. This arm is just over my shoulder. So six squats. And six, and we just switch sides. So now I'm up, this arm's out. for a squat. And again, like I said, I'll show you a couple different things here. The next one is a pressing motion. So upper body. Um, I'll show it to you both ways. We start with the band out. We're in uh, a split stance. So as I bring the band back, I shuffle, press. Six, seven, eight. So very explosive with my lower body, but very, uh, and very explosive and dynamic with my upper body. So again, opposite arm, opposite leg. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great set, great set. So offset squat, shuffle press. Last but not least, and maybe the sneakiest, hardest one, is we're in a bear crawl position and we're just gonna lift opposite arm, opposite leg. So three per side. So from here, so one, two, three, that's it. 
So that's set one. Set one of the strength. So we had an offset squat. We had a shuffle press. And then we had um, a stabilization exercise with the bear crawl. Now, if you've never done any exercises like this, it might feel a little different. Um, a lot of people who use machines who just live in kind of isolated range motion, you don't activate the muscles the same way. So um, hopefully this is opening your eyes up to something new. So next time we're doing offset squats round two. So this time I want to actually um, bring it in front of me. So instead of being out here, I'm in front of me. So both hands are up. Again, six reps per side. So. And it just affects your body. Three, a different way. Where you place the stress on your body, on the, or the load on your body. And that's what I want to show you with this. Same idea, six. So, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so back to our press. Now I'm starting to sweat pretty good here. I hope you are over there as well. That's why we're here. We've earned this feeling. We've earned this sweat. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, other side, other side. Let's keep rolling, keep rolling. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, back to these bear crawls right away, stabilization. So make sure your hands are under your, your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. That's the biggest thing that you need to think about with this drill. So, one, one, two, two, three, and three. Good. Why I do so little of reps with that is the majority of people will fatigue so quickly that they won't be able to do any more than that without breaking somewhere in their posture. Okay, let's get a drink. Well, I hope you're feeling good. We got one more round of this, and then we'll move on to next. Um, we're doing great here with this workout. Okay, so last one of these. So again, I want you to select out of the first two which ones you like better uh, for, the, for the squats. I'll go back to the first one. So here, out, one, two, three, four, five, six, other side, right away. One, two, Three, four, five, six, okay? So we're right to our press. I don't really want to give you a different variation with this because it's already hard enough. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of coordination with this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, other side, let's go, let's keep that power up, come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Last bear crawls, last bear crawls, we're there, come on. Down. One. Two. Three. Good. That's that's done. Moving along nicely. So we should be about 40, 45 minutes into this. We got about 20 minutes to go. Um, we're about to go into the next round of exercises. For this first round, we're gonna be on the ground a lot. So we're gonna be kneeling or, or half kneeling. Um, and if you've never been in these positions, it's important to think of a couple things. So, I want to think stack. So I want my knee under my hip. I want my body over my hip. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be 
like over here, so my knee's out, I want to be over top. When I'm kneeling, same idea about the two. So I want to have two underneath, I don't want to be too wide, I don't want to be too narrow, and I want to stay over my body. So the first one, what do we got here? So the first one we're going to go half kneeling press, we're going to go halo, and then we're going to do a row. So for the press, I'll just use the 20 again. So half kneeling, I want my hip in line, or my knee line with my hip. Hand up, arm out, press. So one, two, three, four, five. Again, pick a weight that's good for you. Seven, eight, maybe you have dumbbells that go higher, maybe you have kettlebells that go higher. Ten, then pick a weight that's appropriate for you. Maybe you don't. I can lift more than this, I'm going to do three rounds of this, I'm still going to get a good workout with all this. It doesn't have to be your max all the time. Three, four, five, good tall posture. Six, this is keeping everything active on the other side of your body. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Drop your knees. So now we're in a kneeling position. So now we're going to do halos. So halos are feet in. Oh, so good for upper body stability, shoulder blade stability, three, four, shoulder health, five, especially all of us sitting on phones and computers all day now, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so those were our first two. The third one is a rowing pattern. So, Use a different band for this. I'll go back to that red one that I didn't like the other time. I'm pretty sure I'll like it here. So for this drill, I want to have my inside leg up. The band is coming from the side of me, and I'm rowing in. It's a rotational row. So I'm letting it kind of turn me, pulling it into kind of my upper abs, and then rotating. Six. Seven, eight. Again, just switch sides. Stay nice and tall. Other hand is up. Three, four, five. Try to keep this like stable. Six, seven, eight. And good, that's one round. We did it. So we're going to do two more rounds of that. Get a drink, pause the tape if you need, like I said. If not, let's keep rolling. Let us keep rolling. I hope you're enjoying this. Obviously, please um, like, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I appreciate all the support I get um, on this page, so thank you. So press one, two, three, remember arm up, four, Five. To make this a bit harder, you could even be here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But this is enough. So, like, that's only if this is a joke to you and you really want to push yourself. Two, three. The thing about going up is you won't be able to lift as much weight, though. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Good. Okay, right back to our halos. So again, good tall posture, right? Nice and tall. Rotate around. One, two, three, four, five. The other way. One, two, three, four. And five. Keep rolling, guys. Keep rolling. We're doing good. So now we're back up here to our rotational row. So first one. Um, inside legs up. Actually. So see me from the front. 
three, keep that leg forward, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just switch right away. Keep rolling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Boom. Okay, so that's two rounds done. We got one more round of this. Hope you're feeling good. I hope you're feeling great. Um, again, take a break if you need to. Like, uh, as you can see, I'm sweating pretty good. This has definitely been a good workout. Um, let's keep going though, so we're on our third round. So, pressing is first. Nice and tall. Out. Two. Three. Make sure inhale, exhale. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Good. Okay, back to the other side. Last one of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Okay, last halos. Nice and tall posture. I love this drill. This is one definitely one of my favorite drills for your shoulders. Three. And you don't again need to do too much weight with this, so this is not one where we drive the weight. You can change your footprint. You can change to do it with even like a pillow. Just gives you that full range of motion. Three, four, and five. Done with that. Okay, so we just got our rotational rows, and we're kind of through this set. Again, I know I've said this, but this doesn't have to be done at a gym. This doesn't have to be done at home. This can be done at either. This doesn't have to be with the exact same equipment. If you have lighter or heavier bands, feel free to use them. If you have lighter or heavier kettlebells or dumbbells, go nuts. Again, some people have a box or a step, some people don't. There's a lot of good information in here that you can use just as one full video, or you could use this as um, multiple uh, videos. And you could, you could take bits of it and put it in each workout that you do. Each one of these sets, are good sets for golfers. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, done that set. Okay, the next two sets, we're just gonna do two rounds of. Um, so we've done all our strength, now we're in stability. We did, uh, we did a couple rounds of strength, now a couple rounds of stability. Now, this drill that I'm going to do right now, for some of you will be like, this is definitely strength. It is, but it's also stability through your glutes, as you're going to see. So we're going to do a split stance rotational deadlift, and then we're going to do a, a variation of a payload press. So I'm actually, again, only going to use the 20. I mean, could I use the 30? Of course I could. But do I need the 30 at this point of the workout, how I feel? Probably not. Okay, so again, think about that for yourself. So split stance deadlift, so I have my toe in line with my heel, my chest and upper body is just going to stay rigid and I'm just going to flex at my hips. So from here, down, and then right back up into my suitcase hold. So from the front, across my body, suitcase, one, two, good strong upper back here, I'm not rounding at my back. So across, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. And you should really feel that in the glute of the foot that's forward. Okay, other side, same idea. One, right back into that suitcase carry. So cross, two. This hand could be here, could be up here, four. Nice and tall body, five, six, seven, and eight. We did the one side, or we did the one drill. Okay, second drill, a rainbow payoff press. So, a lot of people have probably done this. 
So this is an anti-rotation drill. So what I want to do here is the same idea. I'm going to do the same drill, but I'm going to push out and bring it back. So watch. So So I have to resist that rotation back. Same idea. I'll try to show it to you from this angle. So I'm out. And I love that drill. It really kind of sequences everything up nicely. Uh, and it gets your core or your torso firing a lot. Okay, so that's the first round. Okay, so we're only doing two of these, right? The strength, stability, or the stability stuff. Um, so we did the first round, deadlifts, and we did this with the payload press. Now, you could do this on one leg. So like I've just shown you in this split stance, you could come up to here. But there's a lot more balance involved in that. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's good enough for you. So figure out kind of what you like. But I, one thing I will say is that with single leg stuff, if you're just falling all over the place and you can't maintain it at all, go to a split stance. It's not worth it. You're not going to get the same strength effect. If your goal is to work just balance, that's one thing. But if, you work, if you're trying to work stability and strength too, then uh, I would make sure you're on that split stance or whatever one you can handle. So cross. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we're done with those deadlifts. We still got our pale off press. I am just soaked in sweat. I hope you guys are too. <laughs> So here, so these are called rainbow payload presses, making the rainbow to come back. And it is actually kind of hard for me to talk as I do that because I'm trying to stay braced in my core as I rotate back. Okay, so again, better from here probably. So. So you really got to brace on this way back. Last one. Eight. Good. Well, we have one more round of stability and then we have our cool down. We are so close, friends. I hope you're still joining or enjoying this. I hope you're still with me. Um, the last two things that we have are holds. So everything I've done so far has been dynamic, meaning we're going up and down or we're, um, we're actually dynamic, we're, we're doing a flexion extension or, or some kind of joint motion. This is going to be static, meaning we're just stable. So I have a timer here. So both these drills we're going to hold for 30 seconds uh, per side, okay? So let's start with the first one, which is literally a split stance hold. So I'm going to do it here so I can see the timer. So I just get into a half kneeling position and I come up, timer starts. And I'm just trying to hold this in this position. So I always try to tell my clients, think about something else, think about something you're doing today. What do you have on your agenda? What else can you think about other than that you're sitting in this static hold? That's 15 seconds. So we gotta get to 30 seconds. So that's 20. Just stay nice and solid. So your legs are probably screaming at you right now, which is totally normal. Three, two, one. And then we just switch to the other side. So again, one knee, up, and just hold. So feel solid. This leg always is harder. Whatever one you do second is harder because your legs are a bit tired from being down. But try to think of something else. Think about how much you enjoy this workout. Think about how much you're going to do this workout over and over again. Um, 
This is a full body workout, so you could do this, oops, a couple times a week, uh, and it would have benefits. One, two, three, good. Okay, so that's the first drill. And you saw there, I just, my foot was the wrong way, so I stepped up for a second. If you feel like after 10 seconds you can't hold it, just come up for a second and then go back down and try to stay as long as you can for 30 seconds. Over time, you'll get better and better at it. Okay, the second one is for our core. So the second one's a side plank. So there's a lot of ways to do a side plank. We're gonna do it like this. So the front foot is on top, and then we are under our shoulder, meaning my hand is under my shoulder, and I'm just up. And I have the timer going, you just hold here. So breathe. Think about something else again. If you see my hands are over top of each other, my body is straight, and I am just solid. I'm solid and holding this position as best as I can. So that's 20 seconds. We only got 10 more seconds. We just drive to the other side. My feet have to be active to really stick and glue to the floor. Nine, good. Other side. And I love this drill for shoulder stability, for um, oblique activation, core stability, all great things for golfers. So breathe, breathe. Almost there, almost there. Remember, think about something else. Think about what else you're doing today. So one, two, done. Okay, that's one round. So we still got one more round of that. But we're coming to the end, friends. So we have one more round of this, and then we're going to do a few, few kind of cool down dynamic stretching drills, and we're done. You guys have done so good today keeping up with me and going through all these different drills. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, please subscribe and like uh, my channel if you haven't already. And if you have already, thank you so much. Um, so let's finish strong here. So we got our split squat holds first, and then we have that side plank again. And then we have one set of about five drills each uh, that we'll finish off as our cool down. So, ready and go. So breathe. Maybe even this is enough for you at the start, right? Maybe you can't get all the way down to the start. If you do have knee issues, if this is too much because of your knee issues, you could also come against a wall and do a double wall set. But I'd rather you start higher up and try first, then go right to that. But we're almost there, so five, four, three, two, one. Other side, same idea. So again, like I said, I could be up here. If you're really good, you're right here. And that's a whole other world. Like that's your legs are on fire, like that. So most people kind of stick in this range. And they feel kind of, okay, I can get this, I can hold here for, 30 seconds. Again, like I said, if 30 seconds is too much, start lower. Gradually work your way up to 30 seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Okay. All right, guys. So the last one here is our side planks, and then we're into our cool down. So, here, right up. Hold. Remember, think about something else. Think about how much fun we had here. Think about... The next time you're going to work out, what you're going to do. Think about how you're going to integrate this into your training. And just breathe and relax and enjoy the little bit of challenge that this drill actually brings. Three, two, one. Other side. Right away. Breathe. Side planks and planks are definitely under... Um, Underrated, and I think a lot of people could benefit from them a lot. Just get better at doing a side plank, front plank, and a backwards, like a bridge. Um, and if you did that consistently, you'd have a lot better posture, you'd have a lot less lower back pain, um, and you'd play probably better golf too. Three, two, one, good. And we did it, guys, we did it. We got through the whole workout. Now, just like it's important to do this after you play golf, it's important to cool down after we work out. So, what I like to do usually is I just like to kind of pace back and forth for a minute or so. 
Just let my heart rate kind of come back down. Again, like in my head, I'm reflecting over what I just did. Did I try hard there? Did I use enough weight when I needed to? Did I put enough pressure or power into those exercises when the goal was to be powerful? Intention is a big part of training too, like intentionally moving slowly, intentionally moving fast is going to have a big impact on how a drill kind of affects your body. Um, but then after I kind of feel like, okay, feel like I'm back to normal, I feel okay, um, then I'm going to go through all these different drills that I got. So, like I said, I have one, two, three, I got five drills that I want to do once, actually there's six drills, so six drills. So the first one is 90-90 heel clicks. So 90-90 position, if you watch any of my videos, is very, very popular in my world. Um, and you really should be doing this, or be in this position at a time. So nice tall posture, I'm just gonna bring heel to the other heel, and back down. Two, my leg isn't touching here. Three, so I'm hovering over when I come back. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So then I just kind of roll over to the other side. Same idea, make sure I'm in my good position. Good tall posture. One, hover. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. Okay, the next one you line your back. So you're lying straight flat on your back. And this is a staple in my programs for people. It's called starfish. So I bring my leg right up, around, and drive. So that's one rep. So in, drive, around, three, up, around, four. Try to relax your head. Five, six, two more on this one side, seven, and eight. Okay, so other leg. So it stays nice and close up, drive through. Nice and close up, drive through. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Five, six, drive up, around, through, seven, and around and eight. Okay, the next one we have is 360 degree rotations in a half kneeling position. So I've shown you that half kneeling position already. So I love this drill for golfers too, for your shoulders. So I'm, the first two are obviously for your hips. We're trying to kind of take your hip through that full 360 degrees. The second two, are, or these next couple are kind of same for your hips, but also for your shoulders. So I'm nice and tall here. I'm trying to keep this knee in line and really open up and then come back. So, three, four, five, six, open, seven, and eight. So you just switch to the other side. Same idea, good, nice and tall. And you see I'm opening the other way, but still keeping that leg there. And then back. And four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. And so that's the, the first drill. The second one for kind of your back or still kind of your shoulders, but also your hips too, is cat-cow. So a lot of people have probably done this called cat-dog, cat-cow, whatever, uh, the same drill. So I'm gonna really arch, I mean, sort of round my back and try to push my kind of upper back, mid back into the ceiling. And then I'm gonna try to suck it back in and then look up. So I'm really letting my pelvis drop as well as kind of my shoulder blades come down. And then I'm really trying to push them away and then really push my back away. So two, 
Inhale. Good. Okay, so we have two more drills and both of these are static. So that means that we're just holding them. So for this drill, I actually want you to come on your toes. So I want your toes to be, they were here, so I want them to be on the ground. So I'm gonna reach my hand out and just kind of drop through. So I see the time, drop through and just, this is called the cross prayer. So I've really rotated, my palm is up and I've rotated under to feel a good upper back, back of my shoulder kind of stretch here. So I'm inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Just keep going, keep going. And we're almost there, we're almost there. Okay, so now we switch the other side. So same idea, I'm just letting myself kind of melt into the ground here. Inhale, exhale. Everyone did a great job today. I hope you guys enjoyed this workout. I hope you've been, uh, enjoyed what it's like to do a golf specific workout. There's a, there's a lot of good things in here, like I said, that you can take bits and pieces of. Uh, good. Or you can actually use this as one full workout. So you could use each set as an individual set in a different workout, or you could actually um, just press play and follow me along the whole entire time with this workout. So the last thing I want to do is I want to do child's pose. So we're going to do child's pose for two minutes. So literally, I'm going to lay here for two minutes and uh, and let my body just relax. So do the same with me. So we just sit here, sit onto our feet, walk our hands out, and just try to melt. So let yourself relax. This is when you want to really melt into the ground. You should be able to kind of bring your hands farther and farther as the kind of time goes on. Um, like I said, as we've gone through this, uh, this stuff will definitely benefit your golf game. If you uh, are tight through your hips, tight through your shoulders, if you're lacking distance, if you um, aren't hitting the ball the way you were at one time, or you're just not hitting the ball the way you want to, exercise is definitely a differentiator. Exercise is something that can um, get you going back in the right direction. Our body is our biggest tool, especially with golf. People think a new driver every year is going gonna, is gonna to make you play better. And I mean, it might, it might help you play a little bit better, get you a couple yards, but it's not gonna help your overall game uh, as much as improving your body well. So take your body as it's the only one you have and treat it with respect and, and really try to improve it. And uh, you'll see a big difference on the course as well. Okay, so we're in the second minute. So again, just like, we're just trying to melt here and just kind of come back to normal. When we come up here and we kind of finish here, we should feel pretty good. Like, we shouldn't feel like we were in the middle of the workout where we were dying and we were out of breath and we were sweating more. We're still sweating, but like we're not going to feel um, completely exhausted anymore because we've let ourselves kind of come back to normal. So that's why cool down is so important is you want to kind of bring yourself back to normal before you go back into the real world and, and talk to your family and everything else. Uh, so we got about 20 seconds to go here. Again, enjoy this time, enjoy this peace, enjoy this stopping. We all live very busy lives, so it's, it's good to be able to just slow down sometimes and stop and think about our breath and, um, and really relax our body because we're so active and, and high strung all the time. Um, but that's good, so that's our two minutes. So that was the workout. So I, like I said, I hope you enjoyed your experience with this. I hope you enjoyed the workout. I hope you got something out of this. Um, thank you so much for supporting CSC Performance Coaching. Uh, I really do appreciate all the support I get and all the feedback I get from different athletes and different people that do kind of take in my content. If you're interested in coaching or interested in working with me in any way, 
please follow me um, on my social media handles. I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I am on Instagram as myself. I don't have a CSC uh, Instagram. Um, but I also, if you're interested in coaching or anything, you can email me at mark at cscperformancecoaching.ca or you can check out my website at cscperformancecoaching.ca for more information about how I can take you from average to elite. Please like my channel, subscribe, like these videos, share it with as many people as you have, uh, and let's make sure that we're in the best shape as we possibly can to go attack the golf course. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a great day.